Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Good afternoon and welcome to the Inspired Choices Network. I am your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and you are listening to Financially Speaking, where we get together every week and we talk about money and finance and the stress of money and the potential stress of finances. And we talk about how that is a piece of your life, not the entire life that it governs. So I know there's a lot of uh, uh, myths and a lot of confusion and a lot of stress that sometimes people feel about money, especially right now after the holidays. And we're starting in the next few weeks, we're going to start getting those bills in. And you didn't realize maybe what you spent on Christmas and you didn't realize if you overspent and now you've starting to get credit card bills and all that coming in. Um, and that is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the planning of that so that this time next year, you're going to feel no stress and you're going to be comfortable and happy and just have walked away from the holidays as, as, as unique as they were in 2020. The, uh, the holidays of enjoying whatever time and family you were able to hang out with because of the, the rules that we had in place this year. And with all the, the dinners, if um, you were able to have a full dinner, maybe it was just you and your own household and, uh, and it was a quieter Christmas. Even so, um, we're always, I think, grateful for the time that we have with the people we have. And because of that, we look to what's really, really important. And although we do need money and, and my whole life is about money and my financial practice and my bookkeeping finance company, um, we do deal with money every day, but the reality of it is what you're really dealing with is people. And people can have as much money as they want. They can have as little money as they would want or need. Uh, money is not what is the driving force in life. Money is just one of the tools, just like food and air, uh, that we need to live and enjoy a kind of lifestyle that we would prefer. So what I always try and tell people, and, and this year is gonna be no different, in the sense that uh, what you do is got nothing to do with your neighbor or your cousin or your siblings or anybody else uh, or what you see on TV or who you see on TV. Um, what we have to do, what we deal with is our stuff. And that's all that really matters. All we need to know is our, our stuff, our financial status. Um, we need to understand what we have. And I know that's gonna be a, a constant uh, um, goal of mine to help people understand what they have and why they have it, like what their goals are and what their targets are for the future. And today that's, that's gonna be what we talk about today. We're gonna to talk about um, starting the new year off on the right financial foot. And I know uh, <laughs> January one is always that time where people say, I'm gonna do all these resolutions and then they're all gung ho and it's easy to do for the first maybe two, three months. And then gyms are, I, I know things are different, but in a traditional sense, the gyms are overwhelmed with the number of people because we're going to make all these great resolutions or change our life. And, and we get caught up in doing this massive overhaul of our life, uh, either of our body or of our house or cleaning or whatever the case is. And uh, we don't always think about our finances that way. But then what happens is something called the compound effect, where little by little, we aren't keeping at pace. It's not realistic. And you start to see changes a little bit over time, a little bit over time. And that's actually what happens with our finances. That's what happens with weight gain. It doesn't happen overnight, but little by little, day by day, we start to make these changes and, and they start to have a bigger impact on us. Um, and then we think in January, we're going to make a massive change and change our entire lifestyle. And it's just going to work naturally. You know, we're just going to somehow miraculously be able to change absolutely everything about our exercise and diet routine. And um, <clears throat> we're going to change everything about um, potentially our financial situation. And it's all going to happen in this very short time. And it's going to be a massive change. And we're going to do a, a complete 180 in our life. Uh, and that's what I want to talk to you about today because I don't think that that is realistic. I don't think it's, it's mentally healthy for us because it, we're always disappointed by March when we haven't achieved the body weight that we want or the 
bank account that we want or the, you know, the physique or the health status or whatever it is that we're trying to change. Uh, we want to talk about what's realistic. And I think uh, we can talk in a realistic way for sure about finances, but it's definitely about the whole picture. It's about you. It's about your family. It's about your mental health. It's about your physical health. And it's about your financial health. Uh, I, I'll cover the financial health. That's what I do on, mon on uh, Monday nights here on the, finan the uh, Financially Speaking show with the Inspired Choices Network. But through the rest of the week and weekends and on the podcast, because we're in over 50 locations for podcasts, and obviously we're, we're in video now, so we can start to put the face to the voice. But I would invite you to really take a, when I talk today about your financial planning, Take into account too, what's your overall plan? If you truly are interested in improving your physical health, or you're truly interested in improving your mental health, or your, your business health in terms of understanding your business better and knowing uh, more about business or getting a little bit more in touch with how business works, if you're interested in all these things, and just little by little, it doesn't have to be overnight. Nobody got an MBA overnight. I can tell you right now, you don't go to school and graduate the next day. It takes years of work. It takes study and everything does. And, and I find that things that are most important are what takes the time. There is no such thing as an overnight success. There is no, there's nobody that all of a sudden became famous as an actor or actress or singer or dancer or whatever the case is. Um, it didn't happen overnight. They didn't learn everything that uh, they know overnight. I can tell you, and it's taken years and years and years, and not just in school years, but in years and 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 taking courses outside of school and reading to learn about different things in finance. You have to get a license, and the license doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you have to study, and you have to write for it, and these things don't just happen overnight. So. Don't beat yourself up like people do because they don't know something already. It takes time. It takes time and give yourself time and give yourself permission to make mistakes because what I do know is what we learn most and when we learn it the best is when we've made a mistake. So, and I think you'll find that most um, successful business people will tell you they learn more from failures and mistakes than they did from successes. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's not meant to be uh, really fix it now and, and overnight presto magic. There's no such thing as a magic wand, not for your weight, not for your mental health, not for your physical health, not for your financial health. So plug yourself in on the network. Look at the different shows. Uh, there's a lot of hosts out there with a lot of very good experience and very good knowledge that they're sharing every day of the week with us. And when we reach out to the people that are, are more familiar and more experienced in what we know or what we need to know and that they know, then it helps you get there faster. When we have um, a health issue and we go to a doctor, we, we don't wait until somebody goes into medical school and we'll go see you when you're done medical school. And then I'll, once you're a doctor, then I'll come see you. You don't wait seven years for that. No, you go to the guy or the girl who's the doctor now. And you say, I have this problem. And they say, I can fix it or I can't fix it. And if I can't fix it, then I'll send you to somebody else who's a specialist who knows more than I do about this particular ailment. And that's where you go. And that's what you do and you get in as fast as you can and you follow what they say usually and hopefully that's the formula that makes you healthy again and makes it successful it's the same thing with any other part of your life if you need help or you're confused or um just not quite as comfortable potentially on a on a topic then find somebody who is and who has had that either had the same experience you've had and can help you guide you through it or um, go on to the Inspired Choices Network and listen to any of the podcasts. Join us live on whatever show night that uh, you want to join us on. Log into the chat room. Have a conversation with the host. They're, they're wonderful to talk to and they're welcoming and friendly and excited actually because we always like it when there's somebody asking questions in the chat room because our whole purpose to be here is to help you and I say that because uh, we're starting a new year 
And I know I, I'm not a fan of resolutions. I'll, I'll tell you right out from the beginning. I don't do resolutions. I don't wait till January to say I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do that. Um, I throughout the year, I say if something needs to be changed or if I need to learn something or improve something and it's July, then I'm not going to wait till January 1st and say, OK, now I'm going to make a resolution, which is a promise to myself that nine times out of ten, People don't keep and then they're disappointed with themselves and they fall back into the same old habits because they've let themselves down. I'm also not a fan of the word diet. I'm not a fan of following diets. I'm not a fan of um, holding myself into such a tight constraint that I upset myself or I disappoint myself because I wasn't able to follow it. <clears throat> I think you, you choose the lifestyle that you want in terms of what you're going to eat. If you're a vegetarian, if you're not a vegetarian, if you're a complete carnivore, if you're a vegan, I, whatever your choice is, whatever makes you happy, that is the right choice for you. If you're not hurting anybody else by doing it, then it's the right choice. If you're causing pain on somebody else because you're forcing uh, your beliefs or your lifestyle onto them, then that's that's a that's a problem because now you're you're concerning yourself with somebody else's life so if you focus on yourself and i think this is and i am this is not a medical ex expertise or opinion whatsoever this is just in years of experience and dealing with lots of different people and seeing what has worked in my general non-scientific opinion uh what seems to work the best and i know i can speak for myself what works the best for me is when I know what it is that I like and where I want to be and what I want to do and how I want my life to look. And I focus on that and I do successfully implement part of that or all of that and it works. I'm a better person, which means I can give more to other people and I can help my family better. I can help my neighbors better. I can be a better community member because I'm better for myself. And I think if the the best we do and the most we focus on is how to make ourselves the best that we possibly can make ourselves, then that translates into helping other people just by this, just by, if nothing else, the fact that you're not going to be needing health care or you're not going to be needing um, financial assistance through the government programs because you've now made yourself the best you can be. You're financially independent. You're, you're as healthy as you can possibly be and you're happier, which makes us, uh, takes away from any stress and causing of uh, depressions and mental illness. There's no way I'm saying we're gonna cure all that by doing a plan that makes ourselves healthy, but will certainly help ourselves so that we can help other people. And those are the people that we want to focus on and say, you know what, if, if I can do the best for me and make myself the best possible version of myself, then I'm going to be able to help somebody else who needs a little bit more support. And that could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be volunteering someplace. Uh, it all comes together to make us a good person. And that's really the Inspired Choices Network, making you a better person all the way around. So my part of that to help you with your growth or expansion or just getting started in finances is on the financial side. So tonight we're going to talk about the new year. We're in a new year. We're 2021. It's hard to believe. I can remember way back when uh, we were worried about 2000 and uh, all the issues there. And then look what we just come through with 2020. So here's where we are. We're in a new year. It's a new day. Whether it's a new year or not, every day we wake up, it's a new day. It's a perfect time to start. So today we're going to look at our whole year and we're going to say, okay, what is it we need to do this year? What are our goals this year? And I don't mean let's make sure that we've got the perfect body by March break. That's not, maybe that is a goal of yours. And if you're on a path to achieve that, great. If you're on a, I just woke up this morning and I'm going to make a new year's resolution that that's going to happen. You don't have the habits formed probably to make that happen and and we need to look at what's realistic and how we can achieve this because my goals for people financially are are how do you achieve them and if your goal is to win the lottery and that's going to be your retirement plan that is a very tough goal because the odds are not stacked in your favor but if your goal is to have a retirement plan by the age of 55 60 75 whatever your age goal is and we know that your goal is to have a certain amount of money that year 
we can back engineer and say, here's the plan. This is what we need to do to achieve that. So going to Vegas and pulling the slots or buying a lottery ticket, uh, not the best plan. <laughs> that's more of an entertainment value. As I tell people, that's fine. If you want to buy a lottery ticket and that comes out of your entertainment portion of the budget, that's great. Um, but don't count on that as your financial plan and your retirement plan. So I know burst in everybody's bubble right after Christmas, but that's, that's the reality of it. So we're going to take our first break of the night. And when we come back, we have 18 financial goals <clears throat> that we must have. This is it. There's 18 financial goals I'm going to tell you we must have in 2021. And we're going to walk through them tonight. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Inspired Choices Network. And I am Kathy Cook-Noble, and you are on Financially Speaking. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspire Choices Network. And I'm your host, Kathy Cook-Noble, and I'll be with you the whole time. And this year, we'll walk through our financial goals together. So before we went to break, I said we're going to have, um, we're going to set out a plan for ourselves, a game plan for the finances. And you can take this and translate it to any part of your life. You can put this in the whole overall plan of your life. And there's 18 financial goals that you, you, I think you have to have for 2021. And when I say we're going to have goals, we're going to break it down too. So there's, there's short-term goals, there's midterm goals, and there's long-term goals. And we're going to take it so that it's in a way that you understand it for yourself. So when you're sitting down and you're going through this yourself, you say, okay, I understand these are the things that I need to do, and, and it makes sense for me to do them this way, or it's more important for me to do this one over that one. And there's certain things that are going to speak to you more, and there's certain things that are going to speak to you less, and that's okay. That's all right. And like I tell everybody, whatever it is that you want and whatever it is that works for you, then that's the right answer. If you want to have a boat and vacation for two months out of the year, then that's the right plan for you, and your finances have to match that. If your goal is to be able to stay home and babysit grandchildren and spend two or three days a week doing that and then join a book club, that's the right answer too. So the beauty of this is you can't have the wrong answer. The only thing that we want to do is customize what we're doing to you. And we easily can do that. So the one thing we need to remember is that when we achieve our financial, and I say financial freedom, but our financial magic place, if you will. Um, it doesn't happen by accident. So financial success is not typically an accident. 
um, winning the lottery and, and a big inheritance are, I know statistically that that's what uh, a very large portion of the Canadian population is hoping will be the retirement plan. I would suggest that is not the plan that you should rely on. These things don't happen by accident. So we just need to have a little bit of discipline and we need to have a little bit of dedication. And when I use the word sacrifice, it makes me always think of Jim Rohn. And he always said, there's two kinds of, dis there's two kinds of pain. There's the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. So we all are going to experience one of the two kinds of pain. And are we at, at some stage in our life, are we going to be sorry that we had the pain of discipline or the pain of regret? And the pain of discipline simply means that we're going to be the people who go to the gym all the time, who are very, very, very conscious and, and focused heavily on their physical well-being they always, those are the people you look at like, oh, they always look so good and, and the clothes look good on them and they're in such great shape and blah, 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 all that stuff that we say. And then we forget to say, but they have the pain of discipline. So they are very disciplined and they go to the gym on a regimented basis and they are very conscious of what they eat and they're very, very aware of how that works and how that affects them, what they eat and how they work out or if they, the lack of working out. And then we have the people who aren't in that camp and they're not looking after their health. And I, I use this as an example because what we see is always easier to understand and we don't see money. People don't carry around their net worth on their, as a sign and they don't carry around their bank statements and flash them. So what we see is mostly people's physical outward appearance. So the people who aren't car carrying what they eat or they're not careful about um, the food groups that they, they uh, use and they're not going to the gym and they're not physically active. And those are the people who we look at and they're not in great shape and probably not in great health because your health, obviously that goes together, but they are the ones that might have the pain of, of regret. And the regret is if I had just gone to the gym for 30 minutes, three days a week, I could have had better health. If I had just stopped smoking uh, 10 years ago, I might have improved my health and not gotten sick, if th that's the case. Those are the people where you have that regret where you're like, I wished I had put the extra time in to learn the piano all those years ago because now I could pl have played at home. I could have played the Christmas music because um, we have the piano and I think it sounds really pretty when other people play it. So that's the fear of that's the pain of regret the pain of discipline is the people who look back and say i am retiring now and yeah i may have sacrificed buying a more expensive car or i may have sacrificed spending a little bit more on the vacation when i was younger or maybe i i worked a few extra hours to get the overtime but now that i'm retired i don't have the financial stress i know my plans in place I have the money to do what I want to do now, and I don't have that fear of running out of money. So where I'm going to live longer than my money lasts. Those people have the fear of discipline. They have the pain of discipline because they may have sacrificed a little bit going along, but they get to that stage and now they're in the place where they need to be. The, the pain of regret is the people who didn't put the extra money away for a rainy day. And here they are. We, how can I retire now? My retirement is three years away. I don't have enough money to retire. I didn't have the plan in place. And that's where they end up. And that's the fear that they have. So we're going to avoid that. We're going to get ourselves into a little bit of discipline. And it doesn't have to be where we're sacrificing having any fun at all. We're not doing that. We're just getting our life into a bit more of a, a focus. So the very first thing I want you to do this year is start on building an emergency fund. And an emergency fund is exactly that. And an emergency isn't just a health emergency. Emergency is the transmission went on the car and we need to do that. It's the dishwasher or the fridge stopped working and we need to replace that. It's that the kids, one of the kids had um, a tooth knocked out in a sporting event and we now have emergency dental surgery or 
maybe it's that there was a health crisis and we needed to react quickly and we needed to have that finance in place. So whatever it is, an emergency fund is what we're gonna establish. I know we always talk a lot between three and six months worth, just start now. Just start in part of your plan with your cash tracking, where you're tracking what's coming in, you're tracking what's going out, you can call it a budget, you can put it on a spreadsheet, you can get an app, you can do whatever makes you happiest, because make it fun. But whatever it is, that emergency money, you're gonna start saving a little bit now. So if something happened, we have the money to pay for the transmission without going into debt or getting a loan or putting it on a credit card and paying 20%. Or we have the money if um, we got sick and couldn't work for a month. We have enough money to pay for that. The mortgage, the utilities, the food, the insurance, the gas for the, the car, whatever the case is. We want to make sure that we have a little bit of room. So it's that, that, that stress-free area that we're going to be focused on building an emergency fund. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna focus on boosting a low credit score. So if you're sitting out there and you're like, well, I've been denied loans or I've been denied a mortgage or I've been denied a car um, uh, contract like a lease or a sales contract because of my credit score or because my credit score was so low I paid more in interest. Whatever the case is, our next order of action is gonna be, we're gonna focus on boosting that score. So how are we gonna boost it? And a lot of these things, this is the cool part, they're not independent, they work together. So we're gonna get more control and just by being more aware of our money puts us in more control. Because as soon as we start to, to say how much money is coming in and how much money is going out, as soon as we're aware of it and start to pay attention, it's like the, the minute we start realizing that, uh, and my weakness is Doritos, so this will be a good example. The minute you start realizing that you're eating Doritos every day, that's probably not your best uh, plan for health. So as soon as you're aware of it, you can make those changes and it's not a big change. You're not giving up Doritos. You're just not eating them every day. So these are all the things that um, we're going to look at and they all work together, which is kind of nice. So we're going to boost that score. And how are we going to do that? We're going to make sure that we pay our bills on time. We're going to make sure that we're not um, going into more debt, that we're not increasing our um, debt ratio. We're going to increase, we're not going to just keep getting more credit cards to pay for more stuff that we probably don't need, let's be honest. And we're gonna see what's impacting our credit. We're gonna, every year you're entitled to a free credit check and we should do a credit check now, get in the habit of doing it in January. Let's see what the credit says. And if there's any outstanding bills, did we not pay something? It's, and typically it's the cell phone because those are the companies that I see most of the time hurting people's credit. So let's see where we're at and then what do we need to fix? Well, okay, we need to pay our bills on time or we at least need to pay them more on time than what we were doing so that it's fixing it. And that's, that's part of fixing it and that's also gonna be part of getting your finances in order. The next thing we're gonna do is, and I, I don't like the term, but a lot of people use the side hustle term, get a side hustle. So what does that mean? If you need some money, that means find a, find something you can do to boost your income a little bit. So if you're really good at math and there's a few people that they need math tutoring and you've got time on Saturday afternoon and you can do that, then do that. Put yourself in a position where you can increase a little bit of more in the, in what money is coming in. And if it's where you're really good at crafts and you do them anyway, then maybe you set them up and start selling them online. And it doesn't have to be a full blown business. It doesn't have to be something elaborate. Just do something to get your mind in the habit of boosting your income a little bit. The fourth thing I'm gonna tell you, and this is not on purpose as a um, shameless promotion, but make it a short term goal to read three personal finance books. And I'm happy to share this one with you. <laughs> so this could be one. Um, but in reality, just read, make it a goal to read three personal financial, uh, finance books. And they don't have to be, I'm not talking about textbooks. I don't need you to go in to read how the algorithms work on the stock market. That is not what we're talking about. Just go and read something that's practical, that's easy to read. And then frankly, that is why I wrote the book for it's, it's designed for women. It's designed to understand the basics of your money. It's, it's, in, it's meant to explain to you different strategies, not hard ones. It's not about, you're not going to read about different stocks to buy and so forth. 
it's meant to be how to start getting your brain thinking about finances in a way that's very user friendly for you. Uh, the next, the fifth thing I'm going to tell you before we take our next break is start to automate your savings. And in that, I mean, get in the habit of every single week or every single month, a portion of your money is going to be invested and it happens automatically. It comes out of your account. It goes into your investment. If you have a financial advisor, ask them about setting up a pre-authorized checking program for you. That's what it's called. And if it's $25, if it's $10 a week, if it's $25 a month, if it's $50 a month, I don't care what it is. Let's start you on that path, that habit of investing your money. The only way you're going to start investing or have the money invested is if you start it. And the only way it's going to compound is, and compounding is beautiful because you get interest on interest on interest. And the longer you have it invested, the more that works. So we're going to automate your investments. We're up to our second break of the night already. And we're going to continue on our journey to our top 18 uh, financial goals for 2021. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network, and we will be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F word, fear, in the dust. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator, Kathy Cook-Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspireChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookKeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking, and you're also seeing Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. And I'm your host, Kathy Cook Noble. Today, we're talking about uh, the, we're talking about the future. The future is here. The future is now, and we're going to put a plan in place to make 2021 the best year ever for you. Not your neighbor, not your cousins, not not any relatives, not people you used to know in high school 25 years ago. We're talking about how we're going to make it great for you today. And the next point on our list, point number six, is I'm going to tell you one of the goals or one of your targets. I like the word target better because sometimes we have to make an adjustment and we don't always hit the goal right on, which is fine. But you know what? There's always a lot of success in getting close to the goal, too. And people forget that. Uh, and I'll just give you a really quick idea of it. If our goal was to make a million dollars and we only made nine hundred thousand dollars, are we going to be upset? Not at all. So just because we didn't hit the goal of a million doesn't mean we're going to be upset. Upset. The target might be a million. That's why I like the word target better. The target's a million. And if we hit 900, we're pretty happy. So um, our other goal or target for 2021 is going to be to be more health focused. And I'm not saying you have to go to the gym and win bodybuilding contests. That is not it at all. Health focus is just being healthier, a healthier you. And what we do know is the average American spent $10,739 in healthcare in 2017. And that's a lot of money. The, and a lot of that we can cut down on 
by healthier choices, healthier lifestyle. And we don't have to make big changes today. We just have to make small changes every day. And the closer we get to our goal of being healthy or our target of a healthy lifestyle, the better we are. Um, if you, if that means you got to lose a little bit of weight, that's fine. You don't have to lose it all today. Just change your lifestyle a tiny bit, you know, stop eating potato chips at night. Okay. You don't have to eat, stop eating them all together. Just don't eat them every night. And maybe you cut back to saying, I'm just going to have Saturday as my day to enjoy potato chips or pizza or whatever kind of carbs you load up on, whatever it is that is your um, issue or your vice or, or your weakness, whatever you want to call it. Um, just evaluate what you're doing and say, okay, let's, yeah, let's just have our Saturday cheat day in the house. And that's a great one because Jen in our, in our chat room, she shares that with us and that's exactly right. So we can have a healthy, be healthy focused and we can still have fun and enjoy everything. It's in moderation. Everything's, we don't have to cut out bread completely. Um, we can just choose very consciously when and how much to eat. So we're going to be health conscious and health focused. Uh, because the other thing I can tell you, and I mentioned it before, it's not just about how you look, it's how you feel. And mentally you feel better because you feel healthier and your body's healthier, which means you're, you're dealing with less stress and sickness. And when we know stress can have some incredible, incredible impacts on our body and our health. So if we can start to take that away, then that means we're going to be healthier, which means we're probably going to be happier. And when we're happier, we're going to be even more productive and we're going to be more helpful to other people. So it, the spinoff effect is both, it goes both ways when we're less healthy and we cause more, it causes more stress, which means we're even more unhealthy and then we're harder to live with. It has the exact same domino effect in reverse. Uh, the seventh thing, number seven is we're going to get out of debt. Now that might not, again, we're not going to lose 50 pounds overnight. We're not going to get out of debt overnight. It took us a while to get into it, so it's gonna, it might take us a little while to get out of it, but we're going to put a plan in place, and we're going to have a goal, and we're going to say, okay, um, what what is it that really matters? What is it that we absolutely have to spend the money on? And what is it that we're spending money on that we could probably either cut back on or eliminate? And that's how we're going to get our debt under control, and that's how we're going to get out of debt, because what I do know is if we are not out of debt, then we are not financially free. So financial freedom is we have the ability to do what we want when we want, and we don't have anybody else that we have to account to. We don't have anybody holding anything over us. We don't owe people money. We don't, um, we don't have somebody who could come and take our car because our car isn't owned by us yet. It's still not paid for. Uh, these are things that's where financial freedom comes in. So we're going to, we're going to get ourselves out of debt. We're going to put a plan in place for that. And that means we're going to have full control over our income, our finances, and our happiness and our lives. Number eight, we're going to keep accurate records. So I know sometimes people don't write stuff down or don't track stuff the way, um, the way you, you would want to, or the way you'd want to know it. So let's make, let's make it um, a little more accurate. Let's write down what our goals are going to be for this year, short-term, mid-term, long-term. And how does that fit in? We're going to, we could, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. You could buy a dollar book. You can go buy a book at a dollar store and just make that your financial journal and just start to write down money coming in, money coming out. These are our goals. How does this work? And then every month, are we ahead? Are we behind? Did we reach our goals? And we check off our goals. We know it's done. And we could even set rewards when we hit certain goals or when we hit a certain number of goals that we've achieved, then we can give ourselves a reward to look forward to. Make it fun and make it a family thing. It doesn't have to be just a burden of one person. And it's not, it shouldn't be a burden at all. It should be something that we look forward to because it means down the road, our future self is gonna be very happy and thank us. Number nine is gonna be create and follow a budget. Uh, and by that, I don't mean get yourself all tangled up in knots. It can strictly be a piece of paper that has the left side that says money coming in and the right side says money going out. And we write down every time money comes in, how much it is. And we write down every time money goes out and then we subtract money in from money out. And if it's a positive number, then we have money left over. And if it's a negative number, we have some major changes we need to get on. Um, 
there is a lot of different budget techniques you can follow or use. You can look up any of them online. You can download apps. You can do it on Excel spreadsheet. You can get templates for budgets. Whatever you're comfortable with, don't overcomplicate it. Just track it. <laughs> or to quote Nike, just do it. Um, just get on board and, and make us whatever is the easiest system for you. Don't procrastinate because they'll say, oh, I have to figure out, I got to find a program, I got to. Don't do that to yourself. Just start. If you go to the, have a dollar bookstore, go to the dollar book, write it down if that's all you need to do. The tenth thing we're going to do is avoid any large or unnecessary purchases. Unnecessary purchases. Uh, people get themselves into trouble. I'll tell you, I know people who get caught up buying programs. They're going to do these programs. They're going to be the, this is the life changing program we're going to do. Do this program and for $2,000 and in 90 days, you're going to be the thinnest, the fittest, the healthiest you've ever been. Do this program for 60 days for $5,000 and you're going to have um, the best financial situation that you've ever dreamt of you know all these programs that are out there. Stop buying them and not using them because I know most of you buy them and don't use them. I've seen it and I see it all the time <laughs> and I will see more of it this year, I am sure. So stop buying all these programs and not using them. Stop buying gym memberships and not going. Stop ordering magazines you don't read. Stop, of, stop buying all the things that the appliances in the kitchen you never use. I might be a tiny bit guilty of that. Um, I do love kitchen stuff, and I probably have more of those hand appliances that I've, I've legitimately used. So I stopped doing that a long time ago. Um, avoid large unnecessary purchases. The third, the 11th thing we're gonna do, save on utilities. People, I know how hard it is because you can't control utilities. I know in Canada and the US, it's very difficult. It's not like you can just go to a different grocery store. You can't just go to a different power company and, and get a different hydro. But you can save on utilities in certain ways. You can turn your lights off when you're not in the room. You can have energy efficient uh, light bulbs. You can have uh, there are certain times I know in Ontario, we have peak time, mid time and low time for doing laundry and dishes. Do them on the low time. It's a significant difference. Um, there are lots of ways that you can uh, control your utilities. Don't run as many dishwasher jobs, don't run as many laundry jobs with smaller or uh, smaller loads, make sure it's the right load and you are able to do one load instead of two. Uh, if you can, if it makes sense, I'm not saying overload your machine. Like I don't want anybody messaging me saying, well, you told me to do one load instead of two and it really was two and you broke your machine. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, don't just turn the dishwasher on when it's half full. So these are things that we need to look at. Uh, number 12 is learn a new skill. It never hurts. I'm a huge fan of school and I don't have to be in formal school when I say that. I'm a huge fan of learning anything. If you want to learn to uh, play the piano, if you want to learn to play the guitar, if you want to learn a new skill like um, how to create websites or uh, know more about how Facebook works or whatever, there's free courses. Um, there's free courses at libraries. It, check your local library. There is um, Many times you can go to seminars or, or one day workshops that can be free. You don't have to buy the program after, like you can go and learn something um, if you want to. But the challenge is always something that is good for your brain to keep on track. So learn a new skill. Um, the reason for that is also, I think that as you're learning something new, it's challenging your mind, it's keeping you alert and it's helping you remain focused on moving forward so that you're not just going to accept the status quo and that's it and get complacent with your eating with your healthy with the lifestyle with the financial status so learn a new skill and number 13 is going to be set up an appropriate overdraft protection so have credit in mind but not necessarily using it we're going to be fiscally responsible but there's a lot of times when uh, you have the ability to have a line of credit, for example. You, and, and this is the funny thing I find. 
is the banks are willing to give you money when you don't need it, but when you do need it, it's, it's a lot tougher to do. So if you're in a position now and they're offering you a line of credit, but you don't need it, that's fine. And it's not going to cost you anything to have it because you only pay for it when you use it. Put it in place. Accept it. Because if down the road you start a business or something comes up that you need that, then you already have it in place and you don't have to qualify. And then we don't have to worry about the credit score. But because we're putting all these things in place, that's not the idea of why we're going to need it. We're going to have all this in place and we're going to avoid it. But if we happen to have it, guess what? We're now in a position where we have overdraft. We can go opportunity just not. We don't have to wait to get the loan at the bank. We've already got it in advance. And then we're already there. We're not going to lose out on opportunities. So that's your number 15. I have five more for finishing off our financial success goals for 2021. And we're going to take our last break of the night and then I'll come back and share those with you. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookKeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking, and I'm your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and we are very excited and lucky to be on the Inspired Choices Network, where we focus on our overall self instead of just one little piece of the pie, because we are really just one big puzzle that we have to put together. And our part of the puzzle here is the finances. So we've been talking about the, the 18 targets I think you should have for 2021. And number 14 is a loan repayment plan. Uh, set it up in auto play so that you have control of it. You don't miss payments. It doesn't hurt your credit. Um, potentially you get a lower interest rate because you're a good payer. Uh, set it up and make sure that it happens. Here's the one thing I know, and you do hear this, you can listen to all the TV shows on finance and stuff, but it comes down to investing and saving and finance. It's an emo if you take the emotion out of it, it makes it very easy. Life has got a lot of emotions in it, and people surround themselves and surround their money with a lot of emotion. And when you think about it, it's kind of a, a radical thing to do because money has no emotion. So you're putting all this emotion on something that doesn't think, feel, or care about you. Uh, and sometimes we don't put a much, much emotion on people who actually do think, feel, and care about you. It's kind of ironic if you think about it. But money has no emotion. So if we take the emotion out of it and we just look at it and say, okay, you know what? We're going to get the money in place where we're going to automatically save. We're going to automatically invest. Sorry, just gave away 15. That's automatic save. So we're automatically investing our money through whatever long-term plan that we have in place or that we're put, going to put in place. We're going to automatically set any loan repayment, so a car payment, student loan, whatever the case is. We're going to have that every month. We know for a fact that comes out. That's top priority. And it's automatically going to be paid so that we don't get dinged on credit or penalties or interest or hurt our credit. Fifteenth, the number 15 is we're going to automate our savings. So we're going to automatically set up uh, a way to save some money for uh, the short term. So savings is more short term. Investing is long term. So the savings is going to be... There are a lot of easy, easy, easy online banking uh, accounts that you can set up that are all legitimate banks. They're all in Canada. They're covered by the CF, the Canadian um, Deposit Insurance Corp. So you'll see the little CDIC in the corner. And when you, and the, 
in the U.S. you have the, the federal one. So Canadian Deposit Insurance Corp means that your money is safe. If that bank were to go out of business, you're covered up to 150000 in your account. I, I think that's what it is now. It was dropped down not too long ago. Um, but anyway, you're covered. You're safe. So you can set up an online account with no bank fees. We're not trying to incur fees. We're getting it cheaper. We're saving money. We're being more efficient financially. We're going to set up an online account that has absolutely no costs associated to it at all. And the only thing we're going to do is every single pay, we're going to have a piece of that pay automatically direct, directed towards that account. And most HR departments, if you have your bank uh, automatic deposit, which most people do now, and your pay automatically goes to bank A, then you can say to your HR department, I want bank A to still be my bank, but I want $50 or $100 or $10 or I don't know, whatever the number is, depending on your bank, but it make it, you know, say $50, for example, $50 is going to go into my bank B, the one that doesn't cost me anything that I'm not going to touch as my savings and everything else goes into bank A to pay my bills and do everything else. That's what you're going to do to automate savings. Number 17 is you're going to eliminate expensive habits. Okay, this is it, guys. These are your tobacco firearms, gambling, drinking, uh, all those expensive, uh, I, know it's, I know it's legal now, but marijuana, all that stuff is still expensive. I don't care if it's legal, we're talking financially, it's still expensive. Those are expensive habits. And we're gonna either, our goal will be to eliminate them completely, but we're definitely we're gonna wanna start cutting back on them. They're very expensive and they have a lot of spinoff effect for uh, not just your finances, a lot of health effects too, but that's going to be our habit that we're going to look at um, eliminating and changing. And it's going to happen slowly, but surely we're going to cut back. So instead of having five cigarettes a day, you're going to have four and then you're going to have three and then you're going to have two and then you're going to get down to one and then nothing. And you're going to do whatever you need to do. And if part of our original steps of learning something was on our step there, one of our goals, then maybe one of our goals is to learn how to eliminate these expensive habits. And the very last thing we're going to do is get more organized. Once you're organized, it's so much easier. So get more organized. Have a spot to put your invoices or your bills coming into the house. Have a spot to put your financial journal so you can track it all. Get more organized. That's it. So once we get organized, it's so easy to track everything. It's so easy to understand everything. It's so easy to eliminate stress because we know where stuff is. So take time and get organized. And once we start writing down our goals and keeping track of our finances, this is when we really start to see the magic happen. And uh, I, I don't care how much it is or how little you think it is or how much you think it is in, in terms of volume or quantity, it is exciting. And it doesn't matter who you are, and it doesn't matter how many dollars you have in the bank, it doesn't matter how much you've invested, it is exciting when you see these things start to work. And if your neighbor has multiple millions of dollars, and they're still doing this, and they're still structured and organized, they are still excited to see that their money is growing in the right direction. So just because you have something doesn't mean that you can um, lose the fun out of it or lose focus of it. It's not. It's still fun. And it's still exciting. And I, and I will tell you, I will challenge you to see, once you start getting some of these things in place, you're gonna be excited to see others get into place and you're gonna be happy and you're gonna be like, wow, this is so easy, why didn't I do it before? And there we're gonna start building that discipline that we need and we're gonna start taking that emotion out that we need to really start to have the relationship with money that is a healthy relationship that you control, not the money controls. And that's what my, my wishes for you and my goals and targets for you are to, to really get a real good handle on your finances and join us here every Monday on the Inspired Choices Network and not just on financially speaking, but plug yourself in and play the shows over that you need to hear. Or if you miss something, reach out to the host, reach out to any of us either by the chat room or calling and we're more than happy to talk to you and more than happy to help. And I'm wishing you all the best this year and we'll be in touch. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. 
we hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.